Okay, so this is, at least for now, um, our last video on rational expressions and functions. Um, here we're going to look at rational inequalities, right? We looked at solving polynomial inequalities earlier. Um, and your first temptation when you see a rational inequality is to turn it into a polynomial inequality by just clearing denominators. You say, hey, let's just multiply everything by x plus 2. Then it's polynomial, and I solve. There's just one problem with doing that, right? We know, we know from some of the examples we've looked at that we might have a sign change at x plus 2, right? When x is equal to minus 2, there's a sign change. We know that. Um, and, and so that means that if we wanted to clear the denominator, we'd have to do two separate cases, when x is less than minus 2 and when x is bigger than minus 2. Because when x is less than minus 2, you'd be multiplying everything by a negative number, and we know that if you multiply by a negative, that reverses the inequality. Okay, so how do you proceed if you can't just cross multiply, get rid of the denominators, turn it into a polynomial inequality? Well, first step is the same as it was when we were doing polynomial inequalities, which is you get everything on one side. So we say, okay, so this is the same thing as saying x plus six over x plus two minus three less than or equal to zero, okay? Now we're dealing with the problem of figuring out where is a function less than or equal to zero, right? And that's something that we know how to solve. Um, but the first thing we gotta do is we've gotta rewrite this function, right? Because we wanna get it in the form of a rational expression. We want it in that form polynomial over polynomial. And so we're adding up these terms. One of them has a denominator. So we know what we need. We need a common denominator. So these two terms that are missing that denominator, we put it in. x times x plus 2 over x plus 2 plus 6 over x plus 2 minus 3 times x plus 2 over x plus 2. All right. Now everything's over one denominator, so we can group the numerator together. Uh, while we're at it, let's clear these brackets. I've got x squared plus 2x plus 6 minus 3x minus 6 over x plus 2. And I want that to be less than or equal to 0. All right, let's clean up. I can cancel those sixes. Um, 2x minus 3x, that gives me negative x. So I have um, x squared minus x over x plus 2, which I want to be less than or equal to 0. OK. So now we realize that this inequality we started with, it's equivalent to the following inequality, x times x minus 1 over x plus 2 being less than or equal to 0. And the great thing about that is we know exactly how to solve. Okay? The way we solve this is we look at a sign diagram. And again, if you want to, you can, you can think graphically. You can think that this is, this is a rational function with two x-intercepts and one vertical asymptote, and there's going to be a sign change at each of them, okay? So there is an asymptote at minus 2. There's an intercept at 0. There's an intercept at 1. If x is bigger than 1, for example, if x is 2, everything is positive. And then I get a sign change at each of those points. Okay. Now, I want less than or equal to 0. So I'm looking for the places where my function is either negative or 0. Okay. I can't include minus 2 because it's not, you know, I have an asymptote there. It's undefined. So that means that x should be either between minus infinity and minus 2, or between 0 and 1. Okay? 
and that gives you the solution. Uh, feel free to try this, you know, using other methods. Uh, you could see what happens if you do just go ahead and cross multiply. And, and I can tell you what will happen if you go ahead and cross multiply. What you're going to get is you're just going to get the numerator. The denominator will be missing. Okay? And, and so then that's not there. And then you would be missing that part of your solution, right? You just wouldn't get it. It wouldn't be there. You'd miss out on an awful lot of the values uh, that solve the inequality, right? Um, you can also try doing it case by case. Uh, that turns out to sometimes be a bit of a pain. This way, I think, is, is a little bit less work than doing case analysis. Um, so the main thing to remember, if you encounter a rational function, you need to solve an inequality. Um, don't cross multiply, just like with polynomials, get everything on one side, get a common denominator, and you go to the sign diagram.